Uh, all I have to say is, wow, John, I, I am speechless. I am without speech. What, <laughs> what a game it was last night. Our boy Reed Detmers pitches a no hitter. And That's right. you can stamp the fact that I have been a Reed Detmers fan since day <laughs> one. I've That's been cheering this guy. I love this guy. What a game it was last night for the Angels. And they hit a ton of home runs. Rendon hits a left-handed home run. I know. Uh, gee, I think we have some things to talk about, Jonathan. So I think we do. Why don't we talk about it? You're locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I don't think there's any other podcast that you would want to listen to today because <laughs> we have all the great stories to tell. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. If you're listening on the audio side, you can rate and review the pod. And if you're watching on the video side, you can subscribe and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode hits. And you need to be notified because the Angels are playing incredibly. Yeah, they are. Today's episode is brought to you by BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com is your fine jeweler for all your fine jeweler needs and locked on sports listeners get $50 off a $500 purchase and use the code locked on at checkout to get that discount. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us for Locked On Angels. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. We are the Super Halo Bros. Man, all I have to say is read Detmers, read Detmers, read Detmers, Michael. <laughs> yes. I, I, you, know what, you know what it was? It was the red tops. That's yes. what it was. Yes. He is the not pictures. read Detmers. He is red Detmers. He's red Detmer <laughs> Detmers. I love it. The pitchers get to choose what color tops the players are going to wear that night. And it was the first time the Angels wore the red. And yeah. what a night to put that red top on because red Detmers, red dead, Reed Detmers. There you go. How about that? That's good. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of breath. Are you out of breath? Man. Did you see my celebration? I, I was did see your celebration. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, that was just so much fun to watch. That was so Man. much fun to watch. And you, you got to cheer for a guy like Reed. He just looked like he was locked in, zoned yeah. in, and he's just a great guy, right? Yeah. 22 years old. This is, he's still a rookie technically, and he showed tonight the ace that he can be. Yeah. And he's got a long career ahead of him. And I, man, I just think that the angels pitching factory is in full force, baby, because Reed Detmers really showed what we're about. This was the 12th no hitter yep. in angels history. Of course, yep. going back to 2019, you had Taylor Cole and Felix Pena do the combined no hitter on the Tyler Skaggs night that they honored Tyler. Yeah, what a night that was. That was incredible. Uh, that was before I was married, and I was over at my wife's house at the time, and, and she was my girlfriend at the time, and I watched it on my phone, like, sitting on her couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then wept openly. I wept when, openly. When that happened. Yeah. And then last night, I wept openly. Like, yeah, no that, that was such a fun game. And then uh, Weaver, Jared Weaver, there's a reference. Yep. Uh, 2012 against the Twins, and he actually – tweeted at Reed and said, welcome to the club. He did. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. That and then of great. course, Urban Santana to 2011. So those are just the most recent ones, but we've got some going back in history, but Reed Detmers puts himself in the history books as an angel pitcher with a yeah. no hitter and a look lefty at, no hitter too. Look at you with your angel knowledge. I'm hey, very impressed. I'm not new around here. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, John, we talked about how, one of the keys to the, the game oh, was no. <laughs> Reed Detmers going at least five, maybe even six innings. John. Look, he, he had to go at least five because <laughs> anybody should go at least five. That's that's right. my argument. We right? said a quality start would really help. Boy, were we geniuses. We right? got our and, quality start. <laughs> and, and Reed listened to us, I guess. He goes nine innings, one walk, two Ks, and of course, no hits. And can I, can I complain about something? Would that be all right? Please. Angel Twitter apparently doesn't know <laughs> about the rules for no hitters. Why is that? Because when I want, went on Angel Twitter, <laughs> everybody was talking about it. Really? Everybody was talking. My, even, my side of Angel Twitter was was pretty good about Well, who it. am I following then? Because I need some help. Because even Erica <laughs> Weston put 12 up and 12 down. I was like, no, you can't do that, right? Like, like you, don't people... talk about, you don't talk about no hitters and you don't talk about Fight Club. Right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I feel like people 
say the word no hitter is the cursed word because there were so many different ways people were saying it. So I, I, yeah. I understand what you mean, but to top it all off, Bally sports put it right on the screen. And my <laughs> wife was like, Oh, yeah. is there a no hitter happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys, their app wasn't working last night. I had to fight oh, to brutal. watch the game and yeah. Brutal. yeah. And of course it was this game that I had to fight to watch, but man, what, what a game it was. It was totally worth it. I don't know if you saw Reed's interview with Erica Weston. I did after the game. Man, what a humble guy. He yeah. looked like he had his breath taken away. Like he totally. just didn't know how to react to that moment. And she said, how did you feel? Right. And I, I that's a funny question. How, how did you feel? Did you know this was <laughs> happening? And I don't know. Right. And and his response was oh, around the sixth inning, I blacked out. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. No kidding, man. Uh, Gooby made a good point because that funny bottom of the eighth where uh, Brett Phillips all-star pitcher Brett Phillips for the Rays <laughs> came in. <laughs> yes. I love that guy. He's such a character when he's out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, Gooby said it really took the tension out of the moment mm. for Detmers just because they all had a couple of laughs. And we'll talk about that inning in just a minute. But yeah. I, I thought that regarding Reed, that was a really good point that Gooby made considering that it is a tense moment. Yeah. And it took a lot of the, uh, it took a lot of the tension out of the air and sure. everybody was able to have a laugh uh, in that eighth inning. So that was cool to see. Speaking of that interview, did you see all the players actually hanging out after the game in the dugout? I didn't know that. that interview. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was such a great tweet. I, I saw it on Twitter. That was the good part of angel Twitter last night, but it was a <laughs> picture of Erica and, and Reed interviewing. It was behind them and all the teammates are in the dugout, big smiles on their faces. Wow. And again, it goes back to this team seems like they're really knitted together yeah, really gelled. well. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's a credit to Joe Madden and Perry Manassian for yep. creating a culture and bringing in guys that are good for the club. You yeah. know, and we've talked about in the past that uh, players that have had to be let go because they didn't fit the the vibe of the club and right and fight trying to fight Mike Sosha and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is just this is the team that is really gelling together and the cowboy hat is bringing them together. Right. And uh you know I, I know the guy who uh I know the guy who supplied the hat, but I'm not he doesn't want to be revealed. So I just oh okay. Put that out there. <laughs> you know Mark Langston <laughs> said something really great after the game. He said that the change up was the key to this game for Reed yeah. Detmers. And he threw over 25 changeups. And you could tell that the hitters were just off balance. They couldn't quite figure him out. And once Reed, I think, figured that out, he was unstoppable and Cruising. unshakable. And then I think another component to this game was the crowd, John. The crowd oh, 100%. was in. And I don't know if you saw Archie Bradley's tweet Early yesterday, yeah. he said the Halo fans are the best kept secret in yes. Southern California. Edible and so Archie. even if he doesn't believe that, he has caused us to love him more <laughs> because right. what, a, what a great tweet, right? Absolutely. And can I just say that there's good pitching and then there's great defense yes. right? behind Reed Detmers. Yes. You've got Andrew Velasquez doing everything that he does. How about Rendon doing an Air Jordan, an Air Rendon out there at third Man, that base? That guy got off. I'm glad his hips are better because that guy got off the ground. He's got new hips, baby. <laughs> and uh, don't lie. Walsh turning that double play with the ball hit to him at first. He steps on first, throws it to Velasquez at second, and they get the, the outs there. Yeah. And then the seventh inning air on Jared Walsh, where he bobbled the ball from Brett Phillips, man, Brett Phillips is all over this game, I guess. <laughs> and the good news is that it was an error. It yeah. didn't count as a hit. The and greatest error of all time. <laughs> the crowd went nuts when that was scored as an error. You saw yeah. the number pop up one E on yeah. there and everyone cheered. And I can't remember any time in my baseball fandom that somebody's cheered for an error and even yeah. Walsh clapped about it too. Walsh so clapped that, about it. Yes. <laughs> that was just so great. So I love that he applauded that decision. That was hilarious. So yeah, but back to Detmers, man, he had that pitch mix working. He had the changeup going and he had the, the curveball going that Kershaw esque yes. curveball, if you yes. will. <laughs> I'll take that every day. Absolutely. And like you said, he was throwing strikes. Yeah. When Reed Detmers is throwing strikes and trusting his stuff, I think he really took a step forward last night in terms of trusting the kind of pitcher that he is and can be moving forward because you got to have confidence in who you are and you got to have confidence in your stuff. And the stuff is good. The yes. changeup was working 
all night long. And, and I can't remember him throwing more, more strikes. I was there on the very first Detmers day last year against Oakland. Yeah. And this, he looked like a completely different pitcher and let's not gloss over the fact that the Rays are not an easy team to no hit, right? right? This right. raise lineup is really tough. This was a good team and is a good team. Mm-hmm. And he dominated them. And something that was really interesting, a lot of the pregame show was talking about this, that Detmers, they were waiting for him to put it all together. Mm-hmm. And in this game, you kept hearing Gubaza and Langston on the radio side say, man, it looks like he's figured it out. It looks mm. like he's figured out how and to they throw. they would know. And, Those two guys would right, know. <laughs> and when to throw and all of that. And so it's interesting that that was the narrative before the game. And then it was as if Reed just flipped the switch and turned the volume up because, again, he looked like Kershaw last night. He, he reminds me a little of Kershaw because he does the stretch above his yeah. head, right? Yeah. And then he looks like a little bit of John Lester. Okay, and I like that. John Lester with that long left-handed throw. And so, man... Again, I'm I'm a huge fan, have been since day one, you have. Detmer's Day. This was my favorite Detmer's Day, and it, it only can go downhill from here, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that we keep it rolling because yeah. the Angels win 12-0. to zero. We're going to get into uh, more about the game in our next segment. But they're 21-11 and 11 today, yeah. and just first place in the West. This is a huge lead. We're 10 games above 500. What an amazing team this is and that pitching is incredible and we're going to see more great pitching from Shohei Otani tomorrow so we're looking forward to that so we still need to talk about the offense yeah. <laughs> so let's take a breath let's okay. uh come down and reassess <sighs> ourselves bring us back and uh, we'll be mindful and uh, we'll take uh, a look at the offense here in just a second Coming up on Locked On Angels, we will talk about the offense from last night. And we're going to ask this question. Is Shohei Otani more valuable as a hitter or a pitcher? John and I are going to debate that. But first, Mm -hmm. Locked On Angels is brought to you by LinkedIn with spring in the air. It's time for renewal and growth. And you can grow personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find people that you want to talk to and find them faster and for free. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network, over 810 million people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses ranked LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs will help you find the candidates that you want to talk to and help you find them faster. And did you know that nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn every day? And you can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. And remember, there are some terms and conditions that do apply. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And now for your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. You'll get recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts. And you'll hear from John because he did our Locked On Now from last night. Woo-hoo. This this takes fans through the season like no other network. And it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right. We got the important stuff out of the way in terms of the no hitter. Yeah. It feels good to say it. No hitter, no hitter, uh, no, no hitter, hitter, no hitter, no hitter. No hitter. <laughs> <laughs> we can say it now. We're we can allowed. say it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but we got to talk about the offense, Mike. So wow. let's get into some of the incredible stats from the Angels last night. Well, let's make a point that when you're already up eight nothing after oh, yeah. three innings, right? That really helps you to throw your pitch right. and to be around the zone, right? Because you're up eight, nothing. So you're not really afraid to make a mistake. And I think that that was the greatest gift that the angel offense could give Reed last night because he was able to pitch his game and he didn't have to worry about keeping it tight or keeping them in the game. Right. Reed went out and did what Reed can do. Yeah, you're right. It feels like anytime there is a no hitter, it's because the offense gets out to an early lead and that, all began with a trout home run. In fact, he had two yeah. last night, but the first one 
was the one that drove in two, and that was awesome. Then Walsh had an RBI. Andrew Velasquez hits a double, and then right behind him is Luis Renjifo, who hits a double and, and gets uh, Velasquez in. So that was cool to see some production yeah. out of the uh, the lower half of the lineup. And then let's talk about Chad Wallach because he got his first career Great. home run, a three-run home run, and you knew that he was due for one because he was hitting the ball so hard. He hit the ball hard uh, on, on Monday night. He hit yeah. it hard last night, and he was so close in that first at bat and then coming up again and hitting a three run home run. I'm uh, Kurt. If you want a coaching job or if you want a (laughs) office role, Kurt Suzuki, you are more than welcome to take one because I think Chad Wallach should be here to stay because he's not just great offensively. He's great defensively too. Yeah. Yeah. He is. He is the type of player that good teams bring up, Mm -hmm. right? That good teams need. And, and that's why this team is legit. It's why they're good because they have these young guys that they're bringing in and they're, they're filling in nicely. Right. Mm-hmm. And he hits a home run last night. And I love this tweet from angels PR that Chad Wallach and his dad, Tim oh, yeah. are the fifth father and son combo in angel history to play on the angels. The other four were Ruben Amaro jr. And Ruben, Chris and CJ Crone, Jerry and Jeff Devannon. Remember nice. Jeff Devannon? And Bob and Darren Oliver and the Wallachs actually were the first father son combo to hit home runs for the angels. And so, man, he looks very confident back there and gosh, what a great thing to be able to catch Reed Detmers in this no hitter in the major league. That's true. I didn't even think about it from that angle. That's remarkable, right? (laughs) I I think there were two home runs that we have to talk about. First, let's talk about Trout's second home run. Yes. Brett Phillips is on the mound. And that was a softball pitch. And you you just knew it was coming. Everybody in the stadium knew it was coming. And you knew that Trout was going to just unleash the beast (laughs) on that ball. And he crushes it, right? And then Rendon comes up after Otani, right? Otani hits a shot off the right field wall. Yeah. And then Rendon comes up and bats (laughs) left-handed. He's trying to help Brett Phillips out because at that point, it just it happens with position players. Like you'll either get guys to pop up or they're going to crush you. And this is not the first time Phillips has, has done this. In fact, he was pretty comical about it last season. And that's why I was like, Oh sweet. He's, he's going to pitch because the Rays were so far behind in this game. They had no runs of course, and the angels were way up. So, okay. Yeah. Don't waste the bullpen, go to a position player. And after those first few at bats, he's just getting, you know, raked and, and they're yeah. taking him yard and whatnot. Off. Otani, Otani almost had career home run number 100 off of yeah. Brett Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So by all accounts, it seemed like Rendon was like, you know what? We got to get through this inning. We got to get Reed back out there. I'm going to go bat left-handed. Yeah. And then he hits a home run at the bottom of the zone. It goes over the left field or the right field wall. And that <laughs> that's a deep home run. That's a it hard was. home run, right? Like if it hit off the wall and it was a home run. Okay. Like, Oh, that would right. be cool. But he, he crushed that pitch. Is he a new switch hitter? Is he going to be a switch hitter now? <laughs> so I went to MLB.com and actually looked up his card. Okay. And it is listed as switch hitter no as way. of last night. Yeah. That's as of last amazing. night, it said switch when it said batter. And so yes. I love that they were on top of that. That's, that's hilarious. I just, I, you have to give a guy an out. Like literally you've got to give him an out, but you've got to give a position player like Brett Phillips out. Like, like Walsh hit a double that a Rosarino yeah. didn't catch and he's trotting, he's jogging into second because yeah. he's like, I don't want to do this to you. Right. Like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause it could easily be reversed, right? It could have easily 100%. been us down by that much. And we don't want to get crushed when we're just trying to eat innings. Right. And, and so-, so many people have so many opinions about the unwritten rules. And yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. I really hope that there isn't any language like that around last night because I feel like the angels really tried to help they Phillips did. get through that inning, especially with Rendon going lefties. Then yeah. it's like, you know what? If anybody's going to talk about unwritten rules, Rendon bat left. Right. And he tried. Yeah. <laughs> and he still Trout, took him out. Trout didn't care about any unwritten rules. He no, just, Trout he wanted just another home off. run. <laughs> <laughs> he just teed off. But yeah, that Rendon left-handed at bat home run was was so incredible. That was that was so great. Look, all of that aside, it's really great to see production from the entire lineup and yeah. some of the people that are in this lineup 
are due to some injuries and we've had some COVID issues and things like that. So we're without Max Stassi, we're without Kurt Suzuki, and we just got the news that David Fletcher had surgery yesterday right, right. to take care of the abductor muscles in his hips and in his thighs. So he's actually going to be out for a few months. And if you think about it and you think about the kind of injuries that Rendon was dealing with, it kind of makes sense that Fletch mm. hasn't quite been himself since the end of last season. Yeah. And if there's an issue there, then it's great that they're getting this taken care of. But Mike, usually when somebody goes on the IL and they need surgery a lot, like last year, you don't have anybody to replace them. And now we're seeing guys step up and step in. And I love that we're able to bring people up from the minors like Chad Wallach. Even Luis Renjifo has yes. really seemed to come around and he is putting the barrel of the bat to the ball. I yeah, can I just that. talk about him for a moment? Because I know that he's Please. kind of been like a frustration to Angel fans sure. because he just hasn't been able to flip the switch, right? Like right. Reed did. And and we've just wanted that from him. We want him to fall in line with like an Ibar or a Howie Kendrick, some of those right. guys that came up, right? And since he's come up, he just looks like a different guy. And and I wonder if it's because he's confident. And I also wonder if it's because this team just has a different confidence vibe. Yeah, I think so. And I think that he was doing really well in AAA. Yeah. And he's brought that up with him. And like you said, it's it's all about confidence. I think that's why I don't want to give up on Joe Adele because for mm. me, it's, it's mental for Joe Adele. Yeah. And I think he needs to be confident in his game. And the same thing goes for Reed Detmers. He was confident in the pitches that he was throwing. So confidence is key to be, yeah. uh, you know, the stereotypical yeah, yeah. <laughs> confidence is key. And I also think that it's really important that we have guys who can step into the roles when guys go down, like we've been seeing. Absolutely. And and mentioning confidence, you already talked about it, but Shohei is going to be on the mound today. A, a confident starting you see all the awards that he got before the game. Last yeah. night, <laughs> I mean, the guy is the guy is great. Like the guy is a gift to baseball, right? <laughs> Terry Smith was almost out of breath reading all the accolades <laughs> off because yeah. the list was so. The fans long. just kept the fans just kept cheering and cheering and cheering and That's cheering. Right? Yeah, it was uh, so great. With with today's start, Otani is going to start on the mound. Currently, yep. he's three and two. He's got a three point zero eight ERA, forty one Ks. You can thank that last game for that <laughs> in 26 and a third inning he's averaging 14 K's per nine. How about that? Unreal. Stat? Unreal. And of course we're going up against Shane McClanahan, who is not easy to deal with. He's two and two, a 3.06 ERA. He's got 47 K's in 32 innings pitch. So it's going to be a good pitching matchup. You know, Kluber had a great outing against the A's last week and I expected him to kind of carry that over. But so we got I. to him early and we got to him quick, and the Angels were just teeing off on him, and that's how we scored so quickly. So I hope that the Angels' hot bats can continue into this game tonight. So we'll see how that goes, but we're looking forward to Otani's start on the mound. Locked on Angels is brought to you by Built Bar. Summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need some food on the go, and Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on your family vacations. You can make sure that everyone has a bar so that you're fueled for your summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars is they're healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bars, you can have both. All Built Bars and Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. And if you haven't tried the Built Puffs yet, you need to. They are incredible. And they come in great flavors like banana cream pie and even churro. And who doesn't want a protein bar that tastes like a churro? That sounds delicious. Every Built Bar is 130 to 140 calories. And if you can't decide on a flavor, then try the Mix Box. It's 12 flavors of bars and puffs, a mixed variety. You can pick out your favorites as you eat through that box. Built Bar makes it easy for you to eat healthy and to eat delicious. Go to built.com for all of your favorites. Get the banana cream pie or the raspberry or the double chocolate. There, there's so many there. So check it out when you get a chance. They're all delicious. New flavors coming out all the time. And when you go to built.com today, use the promo code lock 15 and get 15% off your order. Use the promo code lock 15 to get 15% off at built.com today. All 
All right, we got one more segment that we want to get to for this episode, and it is concerning Shohei Otani, who will be on the mound today, and he will also be in the lineup. So, Mike, we're going to ask the question, is Shohei Otani more valuable as a hitter or a pitcher? Okay. Do you want to start for this us out? Debate? Yeah, you ready I'm for ready this? I'm ready for it. Yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming hard. I'm coming strong, all right? Okay, listen, I think that we can both agree that we – think that he's great on both sides. But yes. You're, what argument are you going to take? I'm actually going to argue that he's more valuable as a pitcher okay. for the Angels. All right? Okay. So here's why. He's an ace, and we haven't had an ace in a long time. He's the guy that you can put on the mound, and you can almost guarantee that he's going to keep you in the game, and he's going to allow you to be in range of getting the win, right? And his last start is proof of that. He had 29 swings and misses mm -hmm. in that game. And when he's on, he is on. And he gives the Angels a chance in every game that he's in. And we haven't had pitching. And we yeah. need a strong pitcher. And he is proof that when you have a strong pitcher, you're going to have a great team. Even last year as we struggled, he was 9-2. and two, And mm -hmm. he was such an incredible guy on the mound. And so... I think that Shohei has more value as a pitcher for the Angels than he does as a hitter. Okay. What say you? Interesting. I'm going to go with the hitting side. Okay. And I think because Shohei has proven to be more consistent on the hitting side. Okay. Let me t tell you what I mean. When you go back to last year and he went on that tear all through 2021, he was an offensive, offensive monster. And he was season. offensive. <laughs> he was offensive. Yes, definitely. To all the other teams who don't have him on their team. Yeah. But what I think he adds to this team this season is protection for Mike Trout. Okay. Who hasn't really had great protection over the years. We've always put Albert Pujols behind him and never really gave Trout the protection that he needed. Sure. And so you're seeing Trout see a lot better pitches because they don't want to pitch to Otani. The second thing is we haven't had a strong left-handed hitter like him in a long time. Now I know Jared Walsh is certainly becoming that guy as a lefty. Right. right. And he did struggle against lefties last season. He's, he's changing that narrative this season, but when it comes to Shohei Otani, here's what I like about him. He can put the ball anywhere. He can mm. rip one to right field. He can hit one opposite like he did the other night and hit it out. And he can bunt. He can take first yeah. base on yeah. a bunt because they're shifting so hard on him or they're they're playing back because they're expecting a hard hit ball from Shohei. He's fast. He can steal bags. That's not something you get from a normal player who can yeah. also pitch. A power threat who can steal and run well. That's just a crazy combination. And I think he had something like he was fifth in the league last season with stolen bases. Shohei yeah. Otani, yeah. Our, our power hitter. Yeah. And that's just not something that you see. So he has so many qualities as a hitter that you praise in other hitters. You say, oh, he's a strong power hitter. Oh, he's a good opposite field hitter. Oh, he's a speedster on the bags. He can steal you a lot of bags. Shohei does it all. Yeah. And I think as a hitter, he provides more value to this team because of the protection he brings to the lineup and because of his ability to put the ball anywhere it needs to go. And then when you need a home run, he's there for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that while he is valuable to the Angels as a pitcher, obviously we needed somebody like him for a long time. I think that over the course of his career, we'll see him sustain the hitting side. I think that that will last possibly a little bit longer than the pitching side. Okay. But I think... As a hitter, he brings all of these unique dynamics you identify in individual players, and he is combined that one guy. He's that special, and he can do it all at yeah. the plate. That's what yeah. I love about him. Okay, well, I have a counterpoint to that. Okay. Here's my counterpoint. You remove okay. Shohei from that lineup, uh -huh. and you're still going to score some runs. But okay. if you remove Shohei from that starting rotation, I think it actually harms the starting rotation. I think that the ro rotation will feel the weight and the pressure more than the starting lineup would feel that. So that's why my counterpoint, why I think that he is more valuable as a pitcher than oh, he is as a hitter. I also think that this year could be a year if Shohei continues the trend 
that he will win an award. He won't win MVP, but he'll win the Cy Young Award Ooh, this year if I he like continues it. to perform the way that he's performing. So that's my counterpoint to your point from my previous <laughs> point. Do we I got get it? a counterpoint? Uh, your counterpoint? Sure. Bring it. Okay. Bring it on. You know, if he's on the mound and he needs a good defense behind him, he's going to have Andrew Velasquez behind him. And we all know that his bat is not the strongest. It is coming around, actually. I'm just trying to come up with a counterpoint. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, your mom. So they're not scoring. Me. Hey, that's your mom. <laughs> oh, it is my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is, is that if Otani is not in that lineup and you need to rely on somebody who is not the best bat for defense, then you are going to miss that bat. So can we just agree that he's doing it really well on both sides, pitching he's and doing hitting? He's really well on both <laughs> sides, but I think this is where we're going to need the Angel fans to chime in. So please sure. leave us a comment, tweet at us. You can send us a message on Instagram at Super Halo Bros. And you can also tweet at us, Locked On Angels, at Locked On Angels. And if you're watching this on YouTube, leave the comments below. Let us know, is John right? Or is Mike right? And you know the right answer. <laughs> you know the right answer. Yeah, they do. Mike, uh, they made the right choice by listening to Locked on Angels today, but where should we send our listeners next? Their second listen should be the Locked on MLB podcast hosted by Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call him Please. Sully. He brings his unique perspective on major leagues past and present, and his podcast is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can reach us at Locked On Angels. Of course, you can reach us on Instagram and Twitter at Super Halo Bros. You can connect with Mike and I personally. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to share these episodes, comment below, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. And if you're not watching on YouTube, all you got to do is search Locked On Angels in the search bar and you'll see our smiling faces and us excited to talk about the Halos. Mike, speaking of talking about Halos, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's episode? Okay, there's a lot of comparisons between this team and the 2002 team. Mm. So tomorrow, John and I are going to play who we would pick to be on our team. We're going to pick from either the 2022 team or the 2002 team. That's fun to say. And you can play <laughs> along too. I love that. Well, in the meantime, everybody, thank you for joining us. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. And we'll see you right here tomorrow on Locked on Angels.